Hey, and welcome back to the basement for the second and final part of this Atari 2600 multi-cart build. Uh, in the first part, we built this multi-cart. Uh, in the second part, I'm going to show you how to program 128 kilobyte EEPROM with 32 4 kilobyte games. So um, I'll show you how we take the, the individual uh, ROM files and we can put them all together into one large file that we can burn onto this chip then put the chip into the multi-cart and select whatever game you desire using uh, using this bank of switches so um why don't you stick with me and uh we'll get on it right away So this is the multi-cart that I made in the last video, if you remember. Um, it, it works great. I tried it, I programmed the chip, I put it into it and it worked first time. Unbelievable. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. But um, I did run into a few problems because through using it, we're plugging it in and taking it back out a lot to, um, to select different games and stuff. And uh, what happens is that because it's very flexible, um, these connectors can get broken and then they become intermittent or they they uh, they lose connection completely. And what happens is on the screen, you end up with a, a white screen or with, um, with kind of patterns on the screen, uh, but you, you can't play any of the games or anything. So they, they need to be connected back. So I think the only solution for that is to once it's been made is to put it back into its cartridge case um, with a hole cut for the switches and that way um, there's there's no problems going to happen with it. Uh, one of the things I did to try and minimize problems with that was that there's an awful lot of um, ground wire going to different points all across the board. So what I did was I used um, some legs that were left over from resistors and capacitors and other projects I'd done. And um, I just snaked them around to all the different ground points on the board. And that way they're they're stuck to the board so they can't actually um, come off because otherwise they'd have loads and loads of ground wire everywhere. But um, yeah, no, that's it. So I, I had at least, <laughs> at least three times where it's broke on me. I um, They came off this side and I soldered them back in on this side and here as well I, I had a broken wire but um, this is a capacitor I threw on it just to see if it made a difference it actually doesn't it isn't needed so you can uh, you can ignore that and um, I'll show you how to program the the EEPROM chip and uh, we'll get on it right away okay so we've gone to all the trouble of making our multi-cart now what we need to do is we need to put some games on it using one of these, a little um, a little EEPROM chip. So this EEPROM chip is 128 uh, kilobytes big and our multi-cart will read it in four kilobyte blocks. So it'll split this into um, 32 different sections and in each one of these 32 sections we can pop in a four kilobyte game. But um, we are restricted because Many of the games, be they homebrew or otherwise, are bigger than four kilobytes. Atari brought out many, many games that are four kilobytes big, like Circus Atari here, for example, that contains one little four, four kilobyte chip in it. Then there were many others, like uh, Return of the Jedi, Dead Star Battle here, for example, that's an eight kilobyte game. So that would effectively have, um, if you wish, two four kilobyte chips and an extra chip that'll allow the two chips to be switched between as needs to be for the Atari to read different sections of the uh, of the game. Um, because we don't have any of that chip uh, bank switching technology built into our multi-cart, um, we can't use any kind of um, software that's bigger than, uh, than four kilobytes. So um, yeah, that's, that's one little restriction we have, but there, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of um, of uh, homebrew software out there that can be used so uh, yeah I'll, I'll show you how to program up the chip and we'll get to it right now once you've gotten all your ROMs together 
throw them into a folder and the folder I've used I call it homebrew just to separate it from everything else and uh, then open up a command prompt uh, within the command prompt uh, go to this homebrew folder you have and list contents of it with the dir command so what you see then is a list of all the ROMs in the folder in alphabetical order so uh, when we make our large ROM file this this alphabetical order is the way that they're all going to be copied together so probably the best thing to do is to make a note of it now and that way you'll be able to easily select your games um, when when it comes when it comes to time to play it with your with your Atari um, so what we do is we're going to use the DOS copy command to combine all these ROM files into one file so we're going to type copy dash b asterisk dot asterisk dot dash b homebrew roms dot bin hit enter and this will copy all of them all the files that are there the 32 of them into one big file uh, called homebrew roms dot dot bin and um if you list contents again you'll see that instead of having 32 rom files now you have 33 because there's also that big one that you just created and uh yeah so uh, when you type in the copy command be sure to use the dash b because um what it does is it processes whatever files are after dash b as binary and if you don't they'll be far they'll be processed as ascii text and it, that just won't work with the atari i don't even think it'll program because the file size it will be wrong so there you go that's that that's how we combine those So I'm going to go programming my little EPRO and in order to do that I'm going to use my programmer the Mini Pro TL866CS uh, you'll notice here that this molded in the plastic a little image of the chip showing where pin 1 would be with both a dot and a little half moon so what we do is uh, we open our zip socket we take a look at the chip you see there's a little half moon up at one end of it which shows that pin one is here and we just simply insert the chip uh, following the same as little plastic diagram with pin one in the slot for pin one and we close we close the um the zip socket and then we connect it to our computer and we can um start up our programming software and program the chip so the next step is we open up our EEPROM programming software and then we want to load the combined ROM that we created into the um, into the buffer. Have a little check just to see that everything's okay and set up properly and then click on program and wait for the program and verify steps to finish up. And once everything's finished successfully, you can take the EEPROM out of the programmer and go play some Atari. Okay, so we're after making a multi card, we're after programming our chip. Now we want to select our games. So we know that we have uh, 32 games available to us on our EEPROM chip. And uh, what we have is we have a bank of five usable switches that uh, we've set up so that we can select different games so switches like a light switch or whatever can be in an on position or an off position uh, in this upward position on this particular uh, bank uh, they're turned off and when they're flipped down they're turned on so with everything turned off we're in position not the very first game on on the EEPROM um, each of the switches then is assigned a different value so the first switch has a value of 1 the second switch a value of 2 and then 4 8 and 16 so by combining uh, the switches in different on off states we can pick pretty much any um, any of the 32 games on the EPRO so for example if we wanted to play the tent game uh, on our list we would have to pick slot number nine because we're counting from zero so we go zero and by the time we get to the tenth number we're at number nine so to pick number nine we would need to um pick we would need to turn on the switch that has a value of eight which is this one here the fourth one and we would also need to switch on the switch which has a value of one 
So there we go, and uh, that's 1 plus 8 gives us 9. So, just to sign out, there we are. That's our Atari with its multi cart in it and it working. And uh, yeah, there we are. So, look, I hope you enjoyed these videos. And um, if you did and you tried making the cart and it worked for you, leave a comment down below. Just let us know. And if it didn't work for you equally, leave a comment as well. And uh, look, we will uh, we'll talk to you in, in the next video. Thanks for watching.